Welcome, everybody, to the Competition Archery Media Podcast, where we explore all things pertaining to competition archery. I'm your host, PJ Riley, and our CAM podcast is brought to you by our title sponsor, O'Neill's Classic Archery. Today with us, we have a special guest fresh off some super hot performances. There's several of them that we're going to talk about. Tanya Galantine. Tanya, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, first off, we should let folks know you're calling from Kentucky now, which is where you and Braden are living. Yeah, it's it's exciting. We just moved here end of December, so we've been here for you know three or four months, and it's it's awesome. Well, the main reason that I wanted to talk to you first off was indoor nationals. So no woman has ever shot 120 X's before. And you were one of the first. And it turned out the year you did it, there were three of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it felt kind of like Vegas all over again. Uh, <laughs> right. But it was awesome to be a part of. And, you know, we've known... I think we've all known for years that the women could do it. I think we just needed that extra push. And to be honest, I think Lego had a big part in that. Like, oh, okay. I think, you know, for a lot of years, the women were, they were all shooting really, really great. But Lego came in as a 14 year old, won Vegas with a 900. Yeah. Did it again a year after. And I think we were like, okay, we need to step up. We, ah. We needed that extra push and I were like, okay, we can't just cruise. We have to like actually really perform. Yeah. It was uh Lico Ariola, uh Paige Pierce and yourself who shot the yeah. perfect round. That's a that's two days of sixty X's, three hundred sixty X's uh on the five spot face that they shoot there. Yeah, it's a it's it's a long tournament. There's it's yeah. It's different in Vegas as in Vegas, you only have to focus, focus for, you know, 30 arrows and it's a fairly quick round. Right. Take an hour and a half, but this NFA indoor one, it's 60 arrows and it's five arrows at a time. So you really have to stay very focused. Right. How long does that round take? Uh, three to four hours. Depending three to on. four. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and this is, so, um, how did that feel when you shot your 120 X? I'm guessing at the time you knew where Lico and Paige were as well. Yeah. So, you know, we shoot two lines and Paige and Lico were both on the first line. So I oh, got gotcha. to see them shoot 120 X's and I still had five more arrows to go. Oh, so man. that's kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> did that, did you feel extra pressure because of that? Do you think it's, it's, I mean, it's hard not to, but, uh, you know, you, you still know that you're capable of it. You've already shot, you know, 115 arrows in the middle. So you just have to shoot five more. Right. And I had Paige standing behind me and she had just shot hers and she was kind enough to stand behind me. And every time I shot an arrow, she'd be like, yep, just, you know, four more, three more. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> What's the last <laughs> arrow like? I was there when Braden shot his last arrow at the classic to shoot a perfect 660. And, <laughs> you know, I could just see the tension. What was it like for you shooting that last arrow? I think more than anything, there's a lot of relief. I mean, you work towards it all season. You know you can do it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of relief and excitement and yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the best you had shot previously? Um, had you done I'm a 119? To, I shot a 119 with a, um, with an X in the wrong target. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yep, the the switch halfway always gets me, so that oh, one was not fun. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, but my guess would be one nineteen or one eighteen or something before that. Yeah. So w when that happens, w what is it that you think happens that causes you to drop that one or two shots for you? Yeah, for me, 
Um, I think for me, it's a matter of you're at that point, you're so confident that every shot is going to hit and you just kind of let it happen. Yeah. Instead of what something I've changed and I really work on is when I go out there before I start every single shot, I make sure that I'm focused on that one shot. I'm not just like, you know, worried about other stuff or every shot matters. Right. Uh, instead of just being like, Oh, it'll be fine. It's easy. You know? Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So it's just, for me about staying focused on every single arrow and keeping that throughout all five. So in the past I would, I would just shoot five arrows and I would go out there and I'd, I'd probably rush them a little bit more than I should. Right. And now I try, even though I could shoot five arrows really quick, I go out there, I shoot one or two, I stand there for, you know, 10, 15 seconds, catch my breath. And then I shoot a couple more and try to like take it slow. Yeah. Cause you get what, like four minutes to shoot your five arrows. Something yeah, it's crazy. A <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, sometimes when you are in that pressure situation and it's your last five arrows, yeah. or 120, it's nice to have that time because sometimes in between arrows, you have a 20 seconds extra to catch your breath and maybe make your heart rate go down a little bit. Right. Um, so now you, so it would be you, Paige and Lico are the only three women who ever shot a 900 in Vegas and a 120 X in uh, NFAA indoor nationals for you, which one's harder, which one means more to you? I'm sure they're both special, but in, in your perception, how do you take those both in? For some reason, I find Vegas a lot harder. I don't know if it's because it's over three days or it's just the mentality of Vegas. Right. But Vegas just gets me. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard. I, as soon as you start that first day, I don't relax until the last arrow has been shot. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that's a lot of pressure down there on that floor. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So then, so NFA indoor national. So you go into the shoot down now or shoot off, excuse me, between the three of you. How did that feel going in? I've heard so many people say for the Vegas shoot off, oh, by the time you get to that, the hard part's over. This is just for fun. <laughs> but, but then this is where the money comes in. It is. And weirdly enough, you're not worried about the money at all when you're out there. It's, it never even crosses my mind until we're actually done shooting. Okay. It's, it's weird, but for me, that's not why I'm out there, you know? I'm out there because I love shooting and the prize money is just, you know, yeah. an extra bonus. Right, right. Yeah, but I mean, I am definitely a lot more nervous shooting the qualification. And when you actually get out there, you're like, whoa, okay, I did it. I can relax. I mean, I still have to, I still have to shoot good and perform, but yeah. you know, when it's, when it's the three of us, me, Lee, and Paige, you already made the podium. Right. So that's, that's cool. It yeah. is. Um, so now when you shot your 900 in Vegas, you were the only one, correct? You didn't have to go to a shoot off. There was no shoot off. No, it was there just was no me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how was that different being in this shoot off at indoor nationals? I mean, you've been in shoot offs before, but I don't know how this one feels compared to others. It's, it's a lot different when, you know, you know, if you shoot 90 arrows really, really good, you're going to win because I don't know. It, there's a lot more time to be nervous when it's that many arrows and it's over a weekend, like in Vegas. And I remember that first year I shot the 900, I was incredibly nervous. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think I let down like three times. And on your yeah, last end, on my last end. Oh, the whole way through the last day. No it was, kidding. It was horrible. And my normal shot routine is probably like seven to 10 seconds. Okay. Here I, I was probably holding for like 
20 like so it was oh wow yeah i've improved over the years so it doesn't get that bad anymore but yeah yeah <laughs> well so um, in this space of time then uh the week after you uh won nationals then you went to the asa where you shoot in the women's known 50 and took second there and then went and shot second at arizona cup so three totally different tournaments back to back to back how do you juggle that i mean we're talking about an indoor round 18 meter indoor round 3d which is all over the place out to 50 yards and then 50 meters it's it's definitely tricky when they're that close to each other because you have barely two days to get ready and go to the next one and it's a whole new thing and usually when you have to switch formats for me at least it takes a couple of days for the brain to realize that you have to aim at something else you have to do different stuff to you know yeah get to where you want to and i don't know i mean you, you kind of figure out ways to speed up certain processes and what we're going to do for at least this year that we haven't been able to do the other years is we're going to have one bow set up for 3d and we're not going to touch it. So gotcha. whenever we go to a 3d tournament, we'll take out that bow and yeah. the target bow we can leave untouched. So everything's just, you can just grab it and shoot. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you, are you shooting the same, not, not the same bow, but is it the same model for each one? I think you shoot it the is. 38. Yeah. I shoot the 38 for both. Um, same setup and everything, you know, just 23s for, for 3d and the revelations for target or, you know, reading and all that stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you got three different disciplines there. Which one mm -hmm. do you like the best? Which one do you like the best? <laughs> I will always be a target person. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I, for <laughs> me, there's just something about. I don't know if you try it, but sometimes when you shoot and you get in the zone and every just shot just feels amazing. Yeah. It's so much easier to get to that point when you shoot target because you shoot so many more arrows. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you, I never get into a flow where every shot feels amazing. That does not happen <laughs> to me. That's a personal, that's another issue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, because you shoot. I like that. And I like being able to see all my mistakes and trying to fix them and just know that, you know, if I make a good shot, it hits the middle and not, it's a little frustrating sometimes shooting 3d and you're like, wow, that was such a good shot. And somebody's like, Ooh, eight. Oh uh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those lines. I mean, you can look at them forever and, Mm -hmm. You know, then you take your aim and because there's not that nice big yeah. yellow or white dot, whatever, exactly. I've found it. I'm like, oh, that was perfect. And then you go up. Whoa, that wasn't anywhere close to where I thought I was. <laughs> exactly. And um, I mean, I know it's just a matter of me getting to know the animals a lot better. I've, I've been shooting as a on and off for a couple of years, but I never felt like I had enough time to like really get involved in it. So right. I'm hoping this year will, you know, be a lot more. Sure. Or to aim and stuff. Are you in the camp of women who are hoping for a women's known pro? Absolutely. I mean, I've ever since I started shooting ASAs, I was, I've been hoping that there would be a known class or a known pro. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that this is the last year of what a semi pro class or what they call it. Right. And then we'll have a full pro class. That would be amazing. I would guess it is different. You know, that judging distance. I mean, that's a skill in and of itself. And it does seem like the women who are in the unknown class, we don't see them shooting a lot of the other disciplines. Um, you know, indoor, a lot of mm -hmm. them shoot that, but not the 50 meter stuff. Whereas 
for the known classes, that's kind of where we see you, Paige, uh, and even some of the guys, you know, Steve Anderson, Braden, um, where if you're shooting multiple games of archery, it seems like the known is a more natural fit. I, I think for sure it's easier for us target shooters to switch over to a known class. We're already spending so much time shooting all these other target events right? and trying to fit in judging on the side of that can be hard. So it's way easier to just be like, all right, well, I already know what distance it is. I already know where I can shoot my bow. So I'm just going to go yeah. do that. And I think a lot of the, the unknown shooters, they would just rather, you know, spend their time judging. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've seen them all shoot. They, they can shoot a bow really, really For well. sure. Yeah. So maybe we should just be happy that they don't show up. To all <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a whole science. I, I, I like both games because the, the oh, yeah. strategy involved with that unknown game, I just find that fascinating. And that some of them can go up there, you know, Cara Kelly, Sharon Wallace, Emily McCarthy and say, Oh yeah, that's forty-two yards. Where I'm sitting there, uh, it's somewhere between thirty-five and forty-five. You know, <laughs> that's that's how I feel, and it amazes me every time. And sometimes I practice with Emily at ASAs, and there's one ASA where we were out in the range, and we we're just you know judging for for fun for me. And we go up to one, and Emily Emily's like, "So how far do you think it is?" I'm like, "Okay, look at it." I'm like, "That looks really far." And I'm like, "I think it's forty-five." She goes. Hmm, it's 35. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm not judging. <laughs> 10 yards. I've done that. Yeah. Bit off by that much. Yeah. Um, well, shifting gears a little bit, as I mentioned at the beginning when we started talking, I don't know your background story. You come from Denmark. I don't know about archery in Denmark, other than it seems to produce a lot of really good archers. <laughs> So tell me how you got started in archery and what that scene is like in Denmark. Yeah, well, I started when I was 13. So I was, I started a little late compared to everybody else. Um, and I think when I was around. Yeah, I mean, does your family do that or how, how do you get to it? Well, so when I was around 13, we had this school event where we were trying to live like people like way, way back in the day who had to hunt for food and stuff. Yeah. And they gave us this, you know, bare bow, like handmade and everything. Nice. And we shot, I'm like, this is pretty cool. So I found a local <laughs> club and I shot there for a while. And then one summer, which is this changed everything for me. One summer I went for like an archery camp Mm -hmm. And Martin Danspo was there. Okay. And he did like this whole presentation on how it was to be on the national team and was telling stories. And from that day on, I was like, this is amazing. I, I want to do that. So the next two months, cause it was the summer, summer vacation. Yeah. I, my parents dropped me off at the range in the morning and on the way home from work, they would pick me up again. So I had to shop for like six or eight hours. No and by the end of those two months, I made it on my first national team trip. And no kid. How old are you at this point? 15, I believe. 15. And you're shooting a full open compound setup for this. No, by then I was shooting. Yeah. Compound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So and it was. So you made the national team uh, as a senior or as that 15 would be a cadet or <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Your structure may be different over there, actually. Uh, it's, it's the same because we, we follow the world archery. Oh, uh, right, right. Okay. Well, yeah, but I can't remember cadet or because it's changed throughout the years. So it's not the same. It was back then. And I, right. I don't remember, but yeah, it was a, it was like a junior trip of some sort and gotcha. it was awesome. Yeah. Is, and then I actually, what? Yep. I was going to say, is archery a big thing in Denmark? Is it a. It is a very, very small sport. I think there are around 3,000 archers in okay. all of Denmark. 
Yeah. Um, but it's a pretty small sport. Not very many people know about it. Um, we have, you know, a few hunters too, but it's, it's not big. So hmm. you kind of have to look for it to find it. Gotcha. So you can yeah. walk down the street and people aren't saying, there goes Tanya Galantine. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no paparazzi following you, those kind of <laughs> things. <laughs> so that would have been, uh, I'm guessing that was a, like a world archery style 50 meter tournament or? Yeah, it was. It was, uh, we have these events we call European junior cups okay that are just like a world archery event and it goes it's like a week long event and yeah it's cool i think we took first in team or something gotcha yeah yeah did you ever get into field i know field archery is fairly big in europe yeah not in denmark though oh it isn't okay no uh for some reason we don't we don't have that over there it's such it's such a small sport yeah. that i we have mostly target and some 3d shoots too so it's there isn't much so there. small but yet you have you stefan hansen martin damsbo you know three top top tier archers coming yeah. from this country where you're saying eh, it's not really a big sport it's and it's not but we can honestly thank Dan Spo for a lot of that. He puts so much effort into helping the kids out. And obviously me and Stefan are a part of the earlier generation when he started coaching us and right. he taught me so much. Um, What's your so current I, world ranking? I didn't look it up before I called you. Mine's second. Second, number two, okay. Uh, Braden is, has the most World Cup medals in history. Do you, like, are you committed to that series? Uh, obviously now, are you, do you still shoot for Denmark or do you shoot for the U.S.? I don't know that. I still, I still shoot for Denmark, yeah. Okay. Um, it is a long process to, to switch countries. You have to take a full year off before you can just switch. So I wouldn't oh. be able to shoot um, any World Cups, World Championships, or any of that for a full year. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing you don't want to do that. <laughs> not not right now, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so far, I'm, I'm, I like shooting for Denmark. Uh, there are so many, so many talented ladies here in the U.S., and they're all fighting for a spot. Right. Um, yeah so now do um, you like that format you said you like target archery but do you like that world archery format the most i think so it's just it's it's what i've always known and it's what's most normal for me to shoot and what it, it kind of feels like home yeah 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 gotcha at what point do you meet Braden galantine i should ask that yeah <laughs> So I meet Braden. We actually met in Cincinnati for indoor nationals in 2017. 17. Okay. Yeah. You know, we'd met at other events throughout the years, but I'd never really talked or anything. Right. And he's known dance both since they were 16. So they've been friends forever. Sure. <laughs> um, but it wasn't until 2017 that we started talking gotcha yeah and now i'm looking at the wall behind you and it's pretty bare but is there some place where there are just piles and piles of world archery medals somewhere in your house <laughs> <laughs> we actually left them all at his parents house oh you did I, well yeah. yeah mom and dad <laughs> yeah they probably I think of how many people they have come over and this is our son and daughter-in-law there's <laughs> yeah that makes sense. I can get that. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they have a bigger house than us right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so what? what's it like for you now? You know, there's the two of you, the Galantines. I mean, people refer to you as one of the archery power couples. What's that experience like for you? Um, I mean, 
it's it's honestly awesome being able to travel and do this with your husband yeah like everything that i experience i get to share with him right everything cool like my my best like when i won internationals he was right there right it's it's very very awesome and i've learned a lot from him throughout the years Uh because you know he obviously had a whole career before i even started doing archery so right right i've i've definitely learned a lot and improved i do you give him any tips? What, what's what's his form flaw that really bugs you? His form flaw? Oh, I hate his bow arm. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. His, his, like, for example, when we shot last, last year, the first World Cup of the season, it was in Guatemala or Colombia. He won that one. But in the gold medal match, I remember sitting out bag watching him and every like bow arm would be like, it would just look horrible. <laughs> but for him, that was his best shots. Right. And it's frustrating to watch because as, as somebody sitting there, not being able to control it, you're like, Ooh, and then it hits like middle, middle. And you're like, Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hard to argue with the results at the end. It is. It is. I saw him um, when one year when the, world cup was in salt lake and he was in one of the medal matches i don't remember which one Mm -hmm. and where they were shooting the finals the wind was just coming in and it was like a bowl it just came in right behind the archers and circled around there and i'm looking at poor Braden. he's trying to shoot a hinge the other guy was shooting an index finger release i forget where he was from and i just I i just thought Oh, this just looks painful as he's trying to fight this wind with a hinge. Oh, and, he gave and it his those, best. <laughs> he did. And those situations are never fun because no. you, you're trying your best and you're probably making really good shots. But with wind like that, you just you can't control it. I, it was hitting him from all sides, the left, exactly. right, front, back. It was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Salt Lake City is a bit of, is a bit of a wind fest. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so now the two of you are, as we mentioned, you're in Kentucky. There, you're associated with B three. Tell us what that relationship is with you and him with B three archery. Well, right now, I mean, I'm a shooter. Braden helps out the the shop. Um, we love shooting their products. I love their thumb button. I, it's been a lot of years since I've ever had a button that was this crisp. Like it allows me to make the exact kind of shot that I want to. And I feel it has definitely helped my archery reach like a new level. Right. Um, Right. Yeah. Is there something that you've done here recently? Like, I mean, you've been on podiums for a while, but it seems like we're seeing you consistently more here in the last couple of years. Is there something that you did to get to that point? I mean, I know there's a lot of things you did, but I didn't know for something like, hey, I made this change in my form and boom, everything just clicked or something like that. I've, I've been a lot more, you know, focused on making every practice great, but it, a lot of it is also consistency. I've been practicing consistently and I can tell that, you know, if you keep that up over years, that's how long it takes to actually change something. So right. Right. I've been trying a lot harder and, you know, really, really putting an effort in. Yeah. We talked about that you're shooting the Matthews TRX 38. I'm guessing the G2, the new one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this always, I always like getting this information. So you shoot at what poundage? Uh, I'm 59 and a half pounds. 59 and a half. Okay. And which mods do you shoot? I shoot the 70 V. You do shoot the 70 V. Okay. So you're pulling. You're pulling hard when you're in that oh, back wall. I, I, the harder I can pull, the happier I am. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've never been able to get over that. It just feels like that bow wants to go. I can never get comfortable with that. But enough of you do it that obviously <laughs> I'm the weird one and you folks are doing what's <laughs> I, right. I will say it did, when they came out, the TRXs, it did take me a little while to figure out how to shoot them. Yeah. It did take me like at least six months to adjust to them and the new system. Right. Once you get to know them, they're really, really awesome. How much weight, well, which bars and how much weight do you usually run on them? So I shoot the the Conquest Smackdown bars, um, the 747s. Yeah. And I think right now I run about 25 on the back and like 15 on the front. Okay. Yeah. Fair amount of weight in there. But if you're pulling that hard, you're not feeling that as much. Yeah. I, that's also one of the things that, that I've changed through like throughout the years. I've actually, I've added a fair amount of weight on my bow and, you know, draw weight and all that stuff. And right. it, it does make it easier to aim. Slowed Which your you pin down. A lot. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. And now you look pretty fit. Did you do other sports besides archery in your life? I, I, yeah, I used to swim. I swam for a 11 years. Okay. Um, and I, that slowly stopped. Like once I really got into archery, I quit swimming because I found archery more fun. <laughs> and let's be honest here. I swam for about 15 years. Swimming is boring. We can say it. It. Is, it is very boring. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. I hated it. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did it too, but my parents were like, you have to find another sport if you want to. Yes. We can't have you sitting at home. That's exactly what mine said. I switched yeah. to soccer. Yeah, I was like, they made me go <laughs> swimming because my sister went and she was good at it. I wasn't. Yeah, my, my parents always said. Swimming is the only sport you can die from not knowing how to do. Uh, that's, yeah. They, they wanted me to always, you know, know how to swim so I could always be safe in water. For sure. Yeah. No, I it's a good that. skill. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's a good skill to have. <laughs> but besides that, I, I really enjoy running. And I can tell when I'm, when I'm actually consistent with my running and I keep it up for, you know, several months at a time consistently. I can tell. I, I wear these heart rate things. Yeah. During like final matches, it's a lot lower than normal. Oh, really? Mm hmm. How about that? And that just it helps out so much because if you're if your whole body isn't like crazy shaking because your heart rate is going nuts, yeah. it's a lot easier to control your bow and control your shot and your thoughts and all that. Gotcha. Huh? Running yeah. to get to. All right. I'd never heard anybody mention that before. Um, so uh, when you're not doing archery, what do you do? What do you like to do? Well, um, like I said, I, I do enjoy running. Um, now that we're here in Kentucky, there's so many places to go hiking. Okay. Uh, we, there, are, it's gorgeous down here. Um, I just like to enjoy outdoor life yeah. uh when we go fishing sometimes uh yeah nice it for you for archery is there is there a big goal out there yet that you have something on the checklist that tanya galantine has not hit yet let me see well i mean i would like to win a world championship that is yet to be done so that would be a cool one to you know kind of cross off yeah where is it this year next year or next year sorry next year i don't actually know where it is gotcha yeah your shooting I, schedule this year are you mm -hmm. what what is your shooting schedule this year busy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um well, so I won't be going to the first World Cup. Uh, it was just, it was very expensive and everything, but I do plan on going to the last three ones. Okay. All the USATs I can fit in, all the ASAs, 
the NFA, so Field, Reading, uh, Dakota Classic, and then I have I have World Games. Okay. Yep, and European Championships back home that I have to go to. And oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, you are busy this year. <laughs> It'll be busy. Yeah. That's a busy <laughs> summer, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's always those like summer months. Yeah. Have you mapped out what's the what's the longest gap you have between events? It can't be more than like two or three weeks. Oh, no. Even two weeks is a long time yeah. to, to be off. In between. Normally when we get to the summer months and it like really starts, we if we have a week, it's 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 actually really nice. Right. Yeah. Gotcha, man. That's a lot of travel. How about the travel? What, do you get used to that? That much travel? You do. You actually you do. do. And I can actually tell now that we've we've moved to Kentucky and we've been driving to a lot of the tournaments. We flew to Phoenix here two days ago. Right. For the USAT, and I hated it. I hadn't been on a plane in like two months and I was like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and it was only like a three hour flight. <laughs> so you definitely get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. And and because some of those flights, you know, over to Europe or to Asia or whatever, South America, yeah, that's just, those long flights just kill me. Oh, they do. And we have a flight to Korea for the World Cup, you know, in a month and a half or so or two months. And I'm not looking forward to it. It's going to be a long trip. Right. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, practice for you. What What does a typical week look like where you're home and are mm -hmm. able to practice? What does that look like for you as far as archery practice? My week. Well, I I actually I like to get up in the morning, eat my breakfast, and then I like to go shoot and get shooting done as the first thing that day because I always feel like archery takes a fair amount of energy out of me and I want to make sure that that is where I put all of my energy into. So I don't want to, you know, go running or work out or do other errands first. So I was like, I'm like, okay, I want to do archery and then I can focus on other things. And right. Yeah. That's and that's every day. So you'll shoot every day. I'll shoot six times a week, six times a week. And how yeah. many arrows are we talking? Now that depends if, if we're really close to a tournament, it won't be that much. It'll probably be 120 arrows in the days up to, because I want to make sure my body is a hundred percent when I get to that tournament. Yeah. Um, but if we have a week or two, like we do now until the next ASA, right. It'll be, you know, twice that. Twice that pushing 300 arrows and now, okay. Yeah. Probably more like, like, like 200, 200. So now we're yeah. coming up to an ASA. Are you shooting all those at 3D targets or are you one who practices on bullseyes? What's, what do so you do? I always prefer to at least shoot a little bit target, even when we're practicing for 3D. Just for me, I need, I need to know how I'm shooting. And I feel like the only way I can really know how I'm shooting is if I try yeah. to get that middle gotcha. and I can see the arrows go, you know, everywhere or. Yeah. And as soon as I have that confidence, I'm like, okay, the bow is shooting good. I'm shooting good. Then I'll go to the animals and figure that out. I talked to Robert Householder when he was in the middle of the two years that he won a uh, known pro shooter of the year. And I was surprised. He told me he almost never shoots at three D's. He's <laughs> just always shooting. And most of what he shoots is indoor. He's same thing though. He said he can yeah. tell what's happening better there. No, it's it's very important to make sure that your setup is good before you just go out and shoot the animals to make sure that you're actually hitting what you think you're hitting and what you want to hit and just really have confidence in your setup. Right. And f uh, for you, so you said you shoot the you shoot the revelations for fifty meters. And yeah. I'm sorry, for 3D, you shoot in 23s? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay, gotcha. And then indoor, yeah. are you shooting 27s? 
I I did this season, yes. Um, okay. It's actually, it was my first season with 27s. Oh. I tried for a lot of years to make them work, and I just, I could never figure out how to shoot them because with my short jaw length and everything, I could just, my 23, she's shot so much better and I couldn't get myself to shoot the 27s knowing right that they just wouldn't be the same. Stiff, I'm yeah. guessing, yeah. But uh, any of your world archery, USA archery stuff, you have to shoot 23s anyway. So it's, I'm guessing there's f probably fewer events where you need to, or can shoot 27s. Yeah, I mean, actually this year, we got to shoot 27s the whole year because of COVID and there were no indoor World Cups or anything. Right, right. Well, it was very limited when we had to shoot our 23s. The only day we did was uh, the indoor World Cup final in Vegas this year. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So that was like, okay, we shot 27s in the morning and then in the evening we had the finals and we had to put 23s on the bow and... <laughs> <laughs> make the adjustment yes <laughs> it's always interesting uh the Lancaster archery classic how many times have you won that i've won it once i've gotten second one year and yeah gotcha i was just <laughs> thinking of that i didn't know the answer to yeah. that and you have two <laughs> vegas two vegas, one vegas win. i got second this year all right, that's another episode of the Competition Archery Media Podcast. Tanya Galantine, we certainly appreciate your time today and wish you the best of luck going forward with your season. Well, thank you so much for, for having me. It was awesome. All right, folks, Competition Archery Media Podcast. You can find where you find all your favorite podcasts. Thanks for joining us today.